This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. My name is Jim Briotti, and this will be my 100th 24-hour race. Everybody, I'm John Hindorf, welcoming you to Texas, the 28th state of the Union, second in area, second in population. Dallas looks totally different today than it did in 1836 when the state declared its independence from Mexico. From across the globe, visitors flock to the city to see the location where President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. And of course, the TV show Dallas set here back in the 1980s. Travel 200 miles south and you'll find the state capital of Austin. Home to companies like Apple, Facebook and Google, probably better known for a vibrant nightlife and its love of music. But this weekend, we want to tap into the love of motorsport. We're at the Circuit of the Americas just outside of Austin for the Hancock 24 Hours of Cota USA. Um, this is the last race of the 2019 season. Next year we will again continue with two separate championships, the 24H Series Europe, which uh, will take place on five European circuits with four 12-hour races and one 24-hour race, and the 24H Series Continents as a separate championship, starting in Dubai with an Asian round, continuing in Europe uh, with the 24 hours of Barcelona as a European round, and finishing once again here at the Circuit of the Americas in the United States. The Circuit is proud to be hosting this event for the third consecutive year. Uh, so we're quite happy to have the Creventic 24 Hours of Cota. Uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to have everybody on site. Uh, thank you to the teams, the drivers, the mechanic, and everybody at Creventic for uh, going the extra mile, traveling over, and coming to race at the end of the season here at Cota. So, uh, we feel quite honored and privileged that this is the last race of the season and uh, we're already looking forward for a good 2020 uh, race next year. Friday before the race, all of the competitors are setting their qualification time for the division and class to which they belong. It was very good. We managed to do the pole position, uh, which is very special, like to do a pole position for a 24-hour race. It doesn't mean so much because it's a long race ahead. But it's always nice to, to do the fastest lap of the weekend. And now we have a long race ahead and the car looks pretty good. We have a really good lineup. And yeah, let's see. Oh, it's, it's never easy, is it? You know, we're all out here to race, we're all out here to drive fast. So, uh, you know, it was always hard, but we, you know, the Monalau guys gave me a fantastic car um, and we were able to get the pole. So uh, yeah, that's good, uh, but means nothing now. We've got 24 hours ahead of us. So, uh, you know, we've got a race to do. Let's, uh, let's go and give it hell. It was good. and. Uh... I think the pace is good and uh, all my teammates are doing quite, um, we are quite similar in pace so I um, think it should be good, just stay out of trouble and um, have a good race. I mean ideally we win our class, I think uh, if we aim for anything extra, the speed of the car at the moment, I think if we have an overall podium as a group of AMs, so we're three bronze drivers and myself, so we're actually going to be doing over the bronze time, uh, minimum time with our car, with our drivers, so it'll be a big feat if we can stand on the, on the overall podium and you know 24 hour race, Creventic, you uh, never count anything out. This weekend American driver Jim Briody will contest his 100th endurance race, on his mind just yet. Right now it's just another race. If you try to make it something special, you can screw up and mess up the whole thing for the team. So right now this is just a regular race. At the end of the race, I may cry my eyes out, but that'll be a different story. Cars are on the warm-up laps. The organizers have high expectations for the race. As we could see in qualifying yesterday already, the um, difference between the cars within all classes are really tight so this battle we can expect to continue 
into the start today, into the first 11 hours which we are racing today of the Hankook 24 hours uh, quota. So we expect uh, a fierce battle between uh, all the competitors for both the class positions, but also, of course, the overall uh, lead in both the GT and TCE divisions. So a split race, and we're getting ready for the first part of the 2019 edition of the Hankook 24 hours of Kota USA. Spot on 11.30, Saturday, the 16th of November, 2019. The lights are out. Philippe Fraga in the Black Falcon, the number four Mercedes, leads into the first corner. The number two Toxport Mercedes right behind him. The start was very good. Uh, the car was fast. I could open six seconds gap in one hour's stint. And yeah, it was very good. We did not fight uh, any lap. So yeah, it was a very, very good start. Two Toxport teammates fighting for second position. Two separate divisions in the 24-hour series. We have a GT race and a TCE race. And in the touring car group, it's Stuart Hall in the Monlau number 107 that leads. Yeah, the start was good, you know. Um, managed to get a bit of a lead, but uh, probably took a little bit too much out of the front tyres um, and allowed Bury to come back. The Talk Sport number 90 is now in second position with the number 70 in third. It was fair. Uh, the 90 car was quicker than the number 70 and uh, Nick Last uh, makes surely place for the 90 so everything was a ride for us. In the running to become season champions team car collection still behind the bright yellow vault racing Porsche finding gaps in the traffic as they continue their fight. Battles for positions happening on track, but often positions lost in the pits too. The MRS number 980 being worked on in the garage. The Porsche has a fuel pump failure on the track. The GT cars still having to find their way through the touring car traffic. It's really hard, you need to manage with the traffic, so it's we can, you can lose a lot of time with the traffic. So we just need to take care because it's not many drivers with experience, so they just turn in. They don't look too much, so you need to respect them and try to, to overtake without loss too much time. I had a really good stint. Uh, I got into a, into a tangle, not a tangle, but I actually got into a very interesting dice with a 911, uh, not yet, 991 Porsche, and he did a bonsai, bonsai pass on me on the back straight, and I figured he wasn't in my class, so I wasn't going to worry about it. <clears throat> I probably could have passed him, but then... He kept trying to block me. I don't know why. But eventually I forced him into a mistake and I passed him and then took off. From then on, it was easy. Once I got ahead of him, I used traffic and just kept stretching my lead on him. First schedule stops for the GT entrance and right in the middle of the pit stop cycle, Brian Henderson has an accident in his Honda Civic number 126. That causes a code 60. During a code 60, everyone going slower, so a pit stop costs you fewer positions on the track. That really disadvantages anyone who took their pit stop before that purple flag came out. Just unfortunate that we miss out on the, the, the first code 60, so I uh, think a 40 or 50 second gap in the lead in our class turned into a one lap deficit because we missed the code 60. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's life, and we're working hard to try and get back in the lead. The 126 Honda getting attention from the marshals. At the one hour mark, Atlanta Speedworks were just six seconds away from the TCE division lead, but an engine problem means the team have to retire that car. It's, it's a huge bummer. Um, our Atlanta Speedworks crew worked, you know, the last couple of weeks getting the car ready to go. Of course, we're here, we got a big crew, and, and we were hoping for big things. Um, you know, we're all familiar with Coda. Uh, we've done a bunch of endurance racing in the past, so we were hoping that uh, we would have a good result. We had a, a rod go through the block, and our, our day is over. I mean, I'm gutted for the crew. I'm gutted for all the drivers that didn't get a chance to race, and uh, but we'll uh, probably be back next year. While the other cars are back battling in this Hankook 24 hours at quarter, there is still one entrant in the pit lane. I went into the car. We had uh, an intercooler failure, and the car went into limp mode on almost every corner. So we had a power loss. I came back in. Uh, we went through some diagnostics, went back out, same problem, came back in, went back out, same problem. We think we finally have it diagnosed with um, some additional water. We think we had a little bit of a leak in the intercooler. Trent Hinman's been enjoying his stint in the vault racing number 73 Porsche and is happy to be back here. I love this series. Um, the last time I got to run the 24-hour series was uh, back in Bruno in 20, 2015. So 
it's nice to be back for sure. First time running the 24 hours of Coda, so that's definitely uh, definitely a check off the list for sure. It's a fantastic track to have such a long race at. It ain't over till it's over. We got plenty of time to go. Al McGrim in the number 34 Mercedes is battling for the class championship. It was very good. The race uh, was, my skin was uh, very good, no problem. The car was excellent, very, very good. So we are happy that we are in our class on uh, the first position. Three hours down, still 21 hours of GT and TCE cars battling here at Coulter. Uh, there's quite lots of cars. I mean, uh, you always have to look behind you because the GT cars are coming so fast. Uh, I mean, uh, I had a good battle at the end also with uh, AC Motorsport, the Audi RS3 LMS. Uh, we fought uh, pretty hard having both of the cars, uh, no, no more tires. So it was a, was a pretty good fight, it was fun. Uh, obviously, uh, it cost us a little bit of time. You don't want to fight on the track, even if it's a, if it's a race. Uh, you, you try to avoid that because it cuts you uh, some, some time, some good times on track. Yeah. Speed lover Porsche number 978 in the pit garage as we complete the third hour of racing. Here's the standings then, with the top three still on the lead lap. Herbert number 91 Porsche now in the lead, 45 seconds ahead of the Tox Sport number 90 in second. Black Falcon number four Mercedes currently third position overall and in the A6 Pro class. It's the top of the A6 arm field. Car collection number 34 leading that class. Only four seconds ahead of the Tox Sport WRT number 70, CP Racing number 85 AMG in third. In the TCE division, the top six are all within a couple of laps. The Red Camel number 101 Cooper leading with the AC Motorsport 188 Audi 12 seconds behind the race leader, four seconds further back, the Autorama number 112 VW. This is Endurance. It's putting you, you and the car and everybody through the biggest challenge you can imagine. It's, it's pretty much like running a marathon every time you get in the car. And for uh, the car, it's like a 24-hour marathon. It's, it's hard work. And don't ask me why I do it, because I can't give you a good answer. This is the circuit of the Americas, home of the American Grand Prix and host to the Hankook 24 Hours of Quarter. This is a very special circuit. It has always been because of its uh, very narrow hairpin uh, corners, very technical uh, circuit where um, the drivers really need to focus and um, not only battle others but battle uh, themselves and their car as well. It's rare that we have a Herman Tilke designed track in North America, so the rhythm, the feel of it is it's different than anything else we have here. Uh, but that's what makes it such a great place to have a 24-hour race. It's unique. Uh, a lot of runoff room, a lot of topography, a lot of uh, elevation change, sweeping corners, technical sections of the track. It, it demands a lot of the driver, so that's something that I uh, enjoy. And in the night, it's a feeling like Le Mans. You see the lights coming up, it's 250, and it's really brilliant. So I was out there yesterday night and watching my teammates racing here, brilliant, perfect. I, I really like this track. I've been coming here since 2015. I ran my first professional race here, actually, so I'm pretty pretty comfortable with it, and I really like it because it's an F1 track as well. Uh, it's brilliant. It's uh, my second time here, and I love it. It's uh, it's a great track, great atmosphere. Um, well, it's a miracle, so it's uh, it's really cool to be here. I love it. I love it here. This is uh, it's a fantastic circuit. Super high deg, hard on the cars, and uh, to add a 24-hour race to that in in pretty mint machinery it's uh it's ace drivers who want to race at this track it's back on the calendar for next year on the 14th and 15th of november 2020. leader in the spx class the number 710 lamborghini from leipert is lapping the porsche lorient 911 they're currently second in the all porsche 991 category third in that class the 978 of speed lover they're losing positions though they're still in the pit garage pierre eve went out and the car at some point stopped on the track. Uh, I think the right rear drive shaft uh, broke, so the car had to be towed in, and there was a, about a half an hour repair, maybe 40 minutes. So we lost about, uh, I think, 30 laps on the number three car. But as is racing, uh, you know, anything can happen. So we keep pushing, we keep driving, and hopefully, you know, with a bit of luck, 
things may come together maybe tomorrow so let's see the top car number 131 has issues they started from the front row of the tce category but time and time again fabian dance is coming into the pit lane the dashboard failed and then the gearbox got stuck in, uh, in neutral. I tried to reset the car a few times, but it did not work. I was able to drive back. It was like uh, an emergency running system. I drove back with uh, about 30 Ks or something like that, but I was able to manage it into the box. Then they uh, re-plugged some electric uh, plugs and now it seems to work quite well. Finishing her first stint of the weekend in third position in the GT4 class, Samantha Tan. Uh, my stint was pretty good, uh, very consistent. Um, not really any battles, unfortunately, just uh, maybe a little bit with some Porsches out there. Um, I guess as the tire wears off more, we're about the same speed through the corners, so had some good side-by-side -side racing, but overall, pretty clean track for me. <laughs> so Grensport number 851 has damage after spinning off track. I ran over one of the larger FIA uh, bumpers and it disrupted the car pretty significantly and sh spun me around. I didn't really have any time to make any corrections. So uh, I learned a little bit about that. The, not a lot of damage in it. We got back out, uh, but uh, overall really good uh, fun today. The 24-hour series powered by Hankook provides really close racing. It's exciting to watch. No such issues for the number 41 HB Racing Ferrari. It was a blast. I mean, this series is great. The car is unbelievable. The drivers out there, are, for the most part, are very respectful. Um, so the slower TCR cars and GT4 cars, they do a really good job of, of moving out of the way when they can. And, and they've got their own race going, too. You know, I've ran in slower series, and it's the worst thing if you're fighting for the lead or a good position and a big GT3 car just comes flashing his lights all the time. So. There's respect both ways. Good 60 for the number 141 racist Edge Sin R1. They need a tour back to the pit lane. Then the 451 BMW with Matt Travis behind the wheel stops at the same place. But he doesn't need the marshal's assistance. We did have a um, some sort of misfire in the first part of the stint. Um, ultimately, the, the car was having the misfire consistently enough that we did a reset, a uh, hard reset uh, on the inside of two there. Um, but luckily after the reset cycled everything the car got back going and the, the the misfire went away for a while still dealing with a little bit of an issue but I, I think it's good and um, at the end of the day it's a 24-hour race so you expect a couple things to go wrong if the worst thing that happens to us is a misfire that we uh, can fix with a master reset I think we'll be in pretty good shape getting dark here in Austin nighttime racing has arrived and the Americans of CP racing really enjoying their race. Being at the racetrack is a lot of fun. It's it's fun for us to be here because we have a lot of a lot of Americans actually came. We're getting to see a lot of our friends that we don't we used to race with and we don't see them so much since, since we're in uh, Europe uh, now, but we're trying to encourage them to come race more in Europe with us, more with the Gravantec series. And so we have quite a few of them here this year or this time around and it's fun to to see them. True test of endurance for the cars. Multiple entries being cared for by their crew with the 401 now getting ready to rejoin the race. Yeah, unfortunately, we felt a vibration in the rear, so our wheel bearing went, uh, and as we stayed out for the extra lap, it ended up causing some damage to the rear axle as well. So I uh, lost a bunch of time getting the car fixed, but the car's back on track and competitive again. Just got a lot of time to make up. 6.30 in the evening, full dark now, and still four more hours of racing to be completed today. More racing tomorrow. For that, let's take a look at the standings in the GT and TCE divisions. Seven hours of racing completed, and the top three have lapsed between them, with Black Falcon in the lead. Herbert, number 91, Porsche, second overall, third, the number 90, Toxport WRT. In the GT4 class, the gaps are a little wider. Winwood AMG GT4, number 433, have a seven lap advantage over the ST Racing, number 388, in second. Third is Zorg Red Sport, number 451. In the touring car division, the 851 Cup entry of Zorg Red Sport is sixth overall. Leading the division and the TCR cars by a couple of laps, the 101 Red Camel Cupra, the rest of the top four are on the same lap, with Autoramas 112 and 114 VWs holding second and third places respectively. There's no doubt that endurance racing has allowed more and more American drivers to discover racing in Europe and further afield. But there are some US competitors who have always known that there was fun to be had beyond their own borders. 
Jim Briordi has been racing in the 24-hour series for many years now, but his resume in racing goes back a lot longer than that. Well, I started racing back in 1964, so I've been racing for about 54 years. Uh, I started out in a little bug eye Sprite. I built it from the ground up myself. It wasn't super fast. And then we finally put uh, Peugeot back into racing in the United States back in 1981. My first race was a 24-hour race in Ohio called the longest day. It was in, right in the middle of June, which is the longest day. And uh, my co-driver was Danny Sullivan, and we won our race. <laughs> then we continued to progress, and from there, we moved up to the to Peugeot Turbo. We got Janda Guthrie out of retirement, the first woman to run Indy. And so the very first race out she won, she was just ecstatic. Then we continued on from there. We did the 24 hours of Daytona. Then we got into the Trans Am series. We took an old 1985 Dillon circle track car that was designed to turn left, made it a balanced chassis, made everything very easy to work on. And we were six pretty successful as, a, as an underfunded team in the Trans Am. And this is just a glimpse of Jim's racing CV. None of this would have been possible had it not been for one person. <sighs> my bride, my wife is one of my most important people. She was my mentor. She kicked me in the butt. She told me where to go and how to get there. Uh, first date, he took me out to dinner. Second date, he took me to a race. And if I didn't like racing, I was going to the curb. Bye-bye. Fortunately, the second date went well. I loved it. And I figured I had two choices. I could either sit in the house, watch TV, and resent the fact that he was out playing with a car, or I could be grateful that it was only a car he was diddling around with and uh, go out and hand him tools. Needless to say, I chose the latter. Racing in your home country is always special, but this 2019 race in Kota is going to be one that will be remembered for life. It's also my 100th 24-hour or longer race, and it's also my last race. At the end of this race, my helmet goes on the shelf and I'm finished driving. How else do you go out? He's still competitive. He's 75 years old. We hit 124 hour races. And he's driving a 600 horsepower beast. I mean, how can you top that? Now, one of the things that I'm going to miss the most about the racing are the people that are involved in the team and, and the people that I've come in contact with over the years as racers. Uh, Everybody that's connected with the team is basically part of my family. We will miss Jim. For now, there's still a race to be completed. On the track, the Hankook 24 hours of quarter has ended its eighth hour. It's not faring well for Nick Foster in the number 70 Toxport Mercedes. Yeah, we ended up uh, cracking the, the crankcase. So uh, I think a uh, curb strike through turn two or turn 18 maybe um, has just made a little bit of a crack in the case and we're leaking engine oil so uh yeah unfortunately it's a terminal terminal technical drama for us in number 401 sin from racers edge needed just 20 minutes to repair their abs system that hasn't changed their outlook on the race we know the nature of the beast is 24 grueling hours so that means you know keep take care of the car get to the end uh, but sometimes there's some issues that you can't control and you got to deal with it uh, we saw with the mercedes that uh, you know they had a strong car and they're out of the race so anything could happen uh, but we're still a little bit behind, but uh, still a long way to go. Two Porsches trying to take the same piece of tarmac. Uh, when I was in the car, I was overtaking uh, another Porsche in our class. Uh, and um, we had a little bit of a fight. And at some point, we made contact. Um, and I think the front steering arm was bent slightly. So I had to come in. The change just as a precaution on the front tires. Uh, and then I went out and everything was okay. John Mark Lippmann in the number 980 Porsche is not as fortunate. The team needs half an hour to repair the car's drive shaft. That will benefit the 991 class leader, the Kelly Moss, number 906 Porsche. I know we're P1 overall in class by, I think, seven laps. So we're pretty pleased with that. But like Kevin said, we've done, been, we've been a little lucky and we haven't made any mistakes. And the team's been great and the car's been good. Now let's turn our cameras to the Dallas-based team of Americans Vault Racing. How's their race experience been? All of our drivers are doing excellent. Our pit stops are good. You know, this is a big learning curve, learning totally different style of pit stop from what we're used to over here in the other series that we run. The fueling is taking a little bit to get used to. Other than that, the car is just running perfectly and we're just putting the laps down. 
The Americans from Winwood Racing, number 433, not as lucky. The cars ground to a halt and will not restart. Up to now, it's been a good race for Black Falcon. It's nice to be in the lead. We've uh, gotten lucky with a few of the code 60s of when we were able to come into the pits. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess that's the way the dice rolls in this, uh, in this type of uh, racing. Talk Sport have a clear goal for the remaining part of this first day of racing. Uh, we're trying to get back in the lead lap uh, where the Black Falcon guys are. And uh, so far we are, so we, now we are back in the lead lap, but, but they are just nine seconds behind us, so we'll be tied till the end. At the intervention, all gaps other than full laps disappear. Others need more than a lap to catch up with their competitors. We don't wish other people to have bad luck, but we really need other people to have some bad luck so that we can catch back up to them. But we're going to continue to go. We're turning very competitive lap times right now. I think we're the fastest car in our class, so we're inching our way back up. But what drama just after those words have been spoken. It's the 401 again, ground to a halt right at the start of the main straight. So close to the end of the first day of racing, so we'll finish with a code 60. The number four of Black Falcon, first to come across the finish line. They'll start Sunday with a lap over the rest of the field. The first 11 hours of the Hankook 24 hours Kota USA 2019 I have just finished. The cars are right now behind me in Park Ferme and uh, they will rest there over the entire night. Um, the race needs to stop at night for the noise emissions we are, we are causing here. We'd like to run 24 hours straight actually, but um, the municipality of Austin uh, only allows us to run during the day up until uh, right now in the evening. So what was it that brought the racer's edge car to a standstill? Unfortunately, it just broke a piece in the right front suspension and that caused the right front to sit down on the ground. So the right front corner of the car is dragging on the ground right now. Uh, it does not look serious, but something broke there in the right front suspension. We can't work on the car because we're under curfew right now. You can uh, fill out some paperwork and you get a penalty for working on the car, a uh, number of laps tomorrow, either 10 or 20, depending on your circum circumstance. Uh, we're electing not to do that because we, we think we can repair it in less than 10 laps. So now it's time to rest have a short night of sleep because just in a few hours we're going to continue with the second part 13 hours Hankook 24 hours of Kota 2019 and the end of our 2019 season. Here's how it stands at the intermission with Black Falcon leading by a lap the number 90 of Tox Sports second Herbeth Motorsports Porsche finishes the first leg of the race in third position. Much larger gaps between the Porsche class entrance 262 laps completed by Kelly Moss's number 906 entry, Porsche Laurent number 911 in second and third, but still trailing by 31 laps to the class leader, the MRS number 980. In TCE, it's the 101 Red Camel Cupra leading by a couple of laps, VW Autorama number 114 second, AC Motorsports 188 Audi third, with 13 more hours to go. The outcome, far from certain. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's the Hankook 24 hours of Coda right here in Austin. Beautiful weather. Come out, check it out. 13 hours tomorrow. Watch us in the number four AMG. Black Falcon Weather Tech. Hopefully we're going to be up front at the end. This is endurance. You have to remember, it is a team effort. It's not just the driver. The driver is the one that's having all the fun. The team is what keeps the car running so we can have fun. Well, the thing of it is, everybody has the job and everybody does it perfectly. And as long as it's done as close as perfection as you can get, your car will be out on the track. In the United States, the 24 Hours of Coda welcomes back another partner. We wanted to be a partner to the Creventec because they are one of the few racing series using high-octane, unleaded racing gasoline. For Gulf Racing Fuels, we're focused on unleaded racing fuel, and the high-octane is especially good. So we wanted to partner with them to show that unleaded racing fuel can be very popular for racing cars. The fuels that we're using that are leaded were made over 80 years ago, and with Gulf Racing Fuels, they were made in this generation. So it's quite technologically matched to all the great engines we have today. And the Radical North American Cup also uses Gulf Fuel. 
We've had the partnership with Golf for a couple of years, and uh, again, fantastic to, to have that partnership with such an iconic brand in motorsport. And uh, for us, you know, again, it's all about the service and Golf Racing Fuels here in the US do a tremendous job. Just like last year, Golf Racing Fuels is supplying us with uh, fuel here, and they have done so much more activities around the event itself. They will hand out a premium logo gift uh, to all uh, drivers on the podium. Um, they have uh, brought in some stands in the paddock and uh, they brought us in touch with the Marine 4 Toys for Tots uh, Foundation, which have played uh, a big role in this uh, weekend success. The Toys for Tots charity was set up back in the 1940s by the US Marines. Well, back in 46, we had a major that ran a pilot program and was able to give over 5,000 uh, kids a happy and, and wonderful Christmas. What we're looking to do is continue that tradition because Marines are always, always sticklers to tradition. Gulf Racing Fuels, the US Marines, and Dutch organizers Kravendik have joined forces, and the officials have already joined in too. Our ASN, the CNAF, has decided uh, to give the penalty fund uh, of this race of $750 uh, to the uh, charity Toys for Tots uh, as well. We're very proud that um, the motorsports organization also sees um, the need uh, for charity. Um, we ourselves, we have decided to donate 150 teddy bears wearing a 24H series t-shirt, hashtag this is endurance, for uh, those kids in need uh, for, this, uh, for Christmas. Honestly, this is my first 24 hour series and I'll tell you right now, I've just been blown away by not only the staff, but just the reception that we've gotten from everybody here within the, the, the whole race community. If you'd like to donate, please go to toysfortots.com. Sunday morning and the drivers are getting ready for the second part of the Hankook 24 Hours of Kota. We're, we're back at the starting grid for the second part of the Hankook 24 Hours Kota USA 2019. The second part, so 13 hours will race today. Uh, we can expect it to continue just the way it did yesterday. I think generally it's 24 hour races, you got to have a bit of mechanical empathy with the car. So, you know, keeping off the kerbs and keeping the car in shape is the main thing. Um, you've got a certain time that you're trying to hit and keep that window. And we've got a reasonable consistency across all four drivers. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's all about keeping that consistency in the car. In 24 hour racing nowadays, it's uh, flat out from the beginning. Uh, the cars should be reliable uh, and everybody is going at it. So if you, if you uh, save the car, you're going to be too slow and you can't win the race. So it's uh, always flat out. And uh, especially here in this series, you don't have a safety car. So the field won't get back together. So it's, uh, it's a sprint race, but then 24 hours long. Exactly 8 o'clock, leading the field away with a lap in hand, the number four Black Falcon AMG GT3. He's able to drive away all the battles going on behind him. Yeah, I had a really good start. Uh, passed a couple guys, um, was uh, sitting third place for, for quite a while, but you know, those tires had quite a few laps on them from yesterday, so unfortunately I couldn't hold that for very long. After the first racing lap here on Sunday, the Porsche number 906 takes a precautionary run into the pit lane. Uh, we had heard some of the other teams had uh, loose bolts on the drivetrain. In the interest of caution, we decided to bring it in straight away uh, before we restarted for the day, and we brought it in, and they were loose, so we ended up tightening them down. Lost some time, obviously, but we're able to get the car back on track, but it was a good safety precaution in order to make sure the car didn't fail. Those on track fighting for positions. Yes, uh, I like uh, starting because you have a target to, to be uh, on this target. So for me, it's good, good stint. Problems for Autorama's number 112 VW. He lose brake pressure and uh, in, in the corner he, he won't go to the brake, but there was no, no pressure. And then uh, he, he won't go out on the gravel and uh, dry, drove in the tire wall but there was no heavy damage. We can uh, remove all the parts and uh, it needs about 10 or 15 minutes. As Yannick Mettler returns to the pits, the speed lover 978 Porsche is also in need of some assistance. And again, it's the drive shaft bolts that have broken. Teams use the result in code 60 to refuel, but to take full advantage, you need to have your pit stop all done before the troubled car is recovered. Unfortunately, we were a bit too late and pits at the code 60 so we had to change the brake the brakes in the front and yeah as I said we came in too late and 
when we ch changed it, it went to green again, so we lost one lap. But anyway, uh, we're still in the game, um, running on a good P3 so far, and yeah, hope to continue like that. The Black Falcon number 464 recovers from his spin. Yeah, I was in a fight with uh, a car in my class, which I tried to keep it behind me, and I was pushing a little bit too hard, and we we do the, the whole thing here at, at the limit, and that was over the limit, and then, and then a spin, so easy. I knew he's going to spin, you know, I saw him sliding, and I know which uh, side they have immediately to take, you know, he will turn around, and so I took the right side, and that's uh, my experience from uh, like 40 years. Driveline problems for HP Racing. Unfortunately, we could not avoid to do the gear, the normal gear shifts uh, before. So we realized there was a gearbox, ish, gearbox issue and brought the car back on box. We can't really repair here on track. Two divisions, two race leaders. Black Falcon number four leading the GTs. Red Camel number 101, the TCEs. It's my second race with Creventic. I did the TCR 500 last month. Uh, they got me sting right now. I'm addicted to 24-hour to series. That, that's my second race and so far so good. I, I hope and fingers crossed. Touring cars in their own battle as the GT cars passed, including the Court Oyster number 717 Mark II Coupe. Current status is we're in first place by about three laps. It's going to be a close race all the way down to the end because the Lamborghini is very strong. They have to pit more than we do, but they do faster lap time. So it's, a, it's kind of a really interesting balance. Time for a brake change on the Talk Sport number 90. First four hours of Sunday completed. A good opportunity to have a look at the standings. High noon on Sunday. Timing screen showing the Black Falcon number four having two laps in hand to their competitors in second and third. That's because the Herbert number 91 Porsche currently in the pits for a regular stop, but still in second place. A third place to talk sport number 90 is just out of the pits on its out lap. In SPX, the Court Oyster Racing Mark II is the class leader with a three lap gap to the Leipzig Motorsport 710 Lamborghini. Two laps further back, the Mercedes AMG Black Falcon number 464 entry. In the TCE division, Red Camel number 101 Cooper still leads. AC Motorsport Audi, the 188 car in second, third, the 114 Volkswagen from Autorama Motorsport. They're all two laps apart. This is the American leg of the FIA approved 24 hour endurance series. Some of the American drivers have raced at Austin already, but they're just finding out now what racing in the Creventic series is all about. Uh, it's certainly the longest race we've ever done at Coda, uh, but the, uh, the whole structure of this event is quite unique. It's quite different from the other types of endurance racing we've done. It's uh, clearly geared toward fun, so we're really having a lot of fun. And they've really got their stuff together. I mean, if you just look at any of those cargo boxes back there, you can tell this is not their first race. If you look at the way they, they set up and they break these things down, I mean, they are really good at keeping the cost down. The Creventic Series does a really good job of that, you know, with the common fueling, not only for safety, but that enables them to do this race. Realistically, it's probably half the cost of doing something like Daytona or Sebring or one of those typical endurance races, so. Yeah, definitely very cost effective. You don't have the fuel rig costs. You don't have a bunch of the other stuff you need to have. Um, you know, it's very nice to have the garages and just roll your car out. The series just does a great job with everything. And the rules are written so well that, um, you know, they, they make it so the teams have a lot of flexibility, but it doesn't take a lot of a policing to make sure the teams are following the rules. There's something about this series that I really, really love. It's really competitive, really high quality, great endurance racing, but uh, it's also an environment that is uh, uh, just wonderful to be in. You know, all of the officials, all of the, the drivers, the team members, everybody is happy to be here. Everybody in Europe knows about the series, but not as many people in the U.S. does. So as you can see by the big turnout, it's getting bigger every year. I think you'll see a lot more people coming. Yeah, I, I think this is, a, this is a good thing for everybody. I mean, the, the series is great. The organizers are fantastic. It's a very professional series. Um, I like the format. I'm trying to convince these guys to go to Dubai in January. Even after 15 hours of racing, the excitement has not diminished. Some of the gaps look a little large, but there's always the chance of drama with the car of one of your competitors or your own. The 114 had some problems with, uh, with the candle in the cylinder. We have to check it, have to uh, remove all the parts and lost about one hour. 
It's the Speed Lover Porsche that's come to a stop at the side of the track again. It's always the same problem. Uh, the bolts from the drive shaft, they come loose. I think it's with the jump there, I don't know, but now it's getting worse and worse. So uh, we took them from the spare for the other car, the crash car. Now it's our last hope that it will keep till the end. So, But all the Porsches here are suffering exactly the same failure. To be honest, um, there's now a shortage of bolts at the track. No one has any spare bolts. So it's very possible that one team may finish or no teams may finish. Because if any more cars break these bolts, that's it. With everything that can happen during a race like this, teams have to be inventive. We've been having some issues with fuel cut, so we're getting a misfire. It's been happening since yesterday morning. The inside of the BMW, because it's closed window, gets extremely hot. Where the module is situated, for some reason, generates a lot of heat. By putting the ice back, we were able to run six or seven laps before the ice melted with no problems. So I'm hoping the air conditioning uh, from, the, from the car will actually cool it enough to let it allow us to finish the race. The Monlau number 107 team are not as high up in the standings as driver Stuart Hall had hoped. We're P5, so it's not, it's not good enough, but it's always lovely to be racing at Cota, and uh, the Monlau competition, uh, Seat, is, uh, you know, is a really good car. So from that perspective, really enjoyable, but being in fifth place at the moment, not so much. Far more reasons to be cheerful down at Red Camel. Uh, very interesting. It was nice, uh, nice track. Uh, it's very tough in the car, as we can see, and uh, I had good racing and I uh, was enjoying myself. Once again, the GT4 from Racers Edge Motorsport needs the attention of its crew. Uh, well, the driver had a concern about uh, gearbox temperature, so we brought him into the pits and wanted to plug in uh, to address the visual concern that we see, just to verify it in the data. Uh, and that's what the engineers are working on. Uh, we were able to find the seal that was loose, uh, got it replaced and got the car back out on the track. We always talk about endurance racing being a team effort and here's the perfect example as the 188 AC Motorsports crew give it their all. We have a small fuel cut. It's too short, missing a couple of meters to, to be at the fuel station. It's very far, very, very far, and when we arrive at the, at the pit lane box, we always need to change the wheels and push again to the gas station. It's hard. It's great work from the team, but it's not prevented them from losing their second place in TCR. All the hard work from HB Racing hasn't prevented their car from stalling once again. It starts and seems fine here, and he gets out on track, and he goes a short distance, and then it cuts out just shuts off. I don't know whether we're getting closer or not, to be honest. Uh, you know, we have tried some things and they haven't fixed it, so maybe in that sense you're getting closer to the solution, but we really don't know what the problem is yet. Sadly, despite all the efforts, the Ferrari team have to throw in the towel. The 401 won't continue in the race. Still running well, though, the Black Falcon number 464 third in the SPX class. We're competing against the Lamborghini and the Ford Mustang, which is called March, but they are prototypes and we are a regular, more or less regular uh, GT4 car with open power. But uh, we keep on fighting, you know, and everything can happen. The TCE leader is pushing on. The GT leader is taking a pit stop at the end of 19 hours of racing. It's the A6 Pro entry of the number four Black Falcon AMG that leads by a lap. Top Sport WRT number 92nd, two laps further back than the 91 Porsche from Herbert Motorsport. In the Porsche 991 class, it's a battle for national pride as the American entry from Kelly Moss Road and Race have a 20 lap lead over the number 911 French entry from Porsche Lorient Racing. The Germans from MRS GT Racing are four laps further back. In TCE, Red Camel hold on tight with their Cupra number 101. The 131 Cupra from Top Car in second with a scant 82 second advantage ahead of the 188 Audi from AC Motorsport in third. This is endurance. A long day, massive job, and be ready all the time. I do last year some the same car, another champ, another world championship, but it's sprint, and it's completely different. The endurance is just always on the top, always.
Hankook is here as our premium tire supplier and name sponsor for the Hankook 24 Hours Colter USA. This is, uh, has been the fifth year of our cooperation with Hankook and we're very uh, proud to have uh, such a solid basis and such a reliable partner for our tires as uh, Hankook represents. Kreventik Series, 24 Hour Series, uh, powered by Hankook, is our major project for customer racing all around the world. In Europe, in America, also in the Middle East. Then we are proud supplier to DTM, for an example. We are proud supplier to Renault Formula Euro Cup. We are supplier to so many other championships in Italy, in France, in Portugal. We have now uh, some experience in the uh, Scandinavian market. And last but not least, we are the proud supplier to Radical globally and especially here in the US. The Radical is really, really important for us because they have so many cars running, so many different types of Radicals. So therefore, we are happy and proud to be the supplier to Radical as well. It's very important for us to have the same level of service for all of our championships. And uh, Hankook have done a tremendous job, not only with the service, but providing a tyre that's also quite, quite a long life tyre, probably a little too long. Uh, to be honest, we'd love to sell some more tyres, but, um, but the tyres are really good quality tyre. It, it has a very slow drop-off rate and um, is providing not only good lap times, but uh, that, that, uh, that endurance, which is so important for our club racers in particular. The Radical Cup North America is here this weekend as one of the support series. This weekend we had two support series, the uh, Blue Marble Cocktails Radical Cup North America, which uh, took part with 32 vehicles, and also we had the SECCA uh, Pro Spec Racer Group, which took part with close to 40 vehicles, so we are very happy. And it's fantastic to be with Creventec this weekend, uh, the final round of our six round championship for 2019 and uh, another flagship event for us we we were with indycar earlier in the year as well as sro and very very pleased to be uh, partnering with creventec this weekend into the last five hours of the Hankook 24 hours of Corte USA in the A6 AM category, just a lap between the 85 AMG from CP Racing and the class leading 34 Audi from Car Collection. The 34 pulls up on track. A happy moment, surely, then for the CP Racing team. I was glad to see that it was just a fuel problem and not something wrong with the car, honestly. I mean, we love racing those guys and to. Uh, to to beat them that way wouldn't be fair for them or us, I, I don't think so. Great work by Car Collection, gets the car quickly back to the track, so the fight is on again. TCE race leader into the pits. Uh, Jeremy was in the car and he uh, broke his shock absorber and uh, we managed to uh, change the shock absorber, but it cost a lot of laps and uh, so um, we were leading and now we're leading very closely, so it's going to be difficult. Great run for the number 710 Lightbart Motorsport Lamborghini. Fought its way all the way to the top of SPX. Core also was uh, three, four laps in front of us, but then, um, yeah, we uh, take the gap back and uh, now we are happy. But, you know, the race is long and we have four hours to go. Major problems for the Core Oyster number 717 Mark II entry. Uh, Jim already complained about a lot of understeer in his stint. So I think that's where it started, and uh, after the straightaway it, it collapsed and uh, uh, the wheel was uh, like uh, five centimeters out. So we have to replace it, which took us uh, dear time and uh, basically we lost uh, contact with our competitors. Time to switch on the headlights for the second time in this race. Here at Corte it gets dark very quickly. Kelly Moss number 906 has been leading the Porsche 991 class since the start now has problems. They, ha they saw a broken half shaft, so they fixed the half shaft. They got that done quickly. I went back out, went down the, the pit lane about, you know, a couple hundred meters, and I heard it making noise again. I knew that it wasn't the half shaft, it was uh, the differential. So I stopped the car, and I had them roll me back, so now they're pulling the gearbox. It's bad news for the team as their race finishes here, and another car coming in to retire. Uh, the driver mentioned, I don't have power, I don't have power and then we had to discuss on the radio quickly what it could have been or it was traction or it was the power itself and then he came in with some flames from the exhaust meaning an injector what is leaking so we had to retire unfortunately the final scheduled pit stops of the 2019 season are about to take place and the herbeth mechanics have made this one i want to remember
Yes, it's going to be the last pit stop of the season, but it's going to be a short break because it starts again in Dubai in six weeks, I think, more or less. Driver Ralph Bourne had not been informed of the team's new outfits. The team looks like crazy. They look like um, animals, so they have uh, pink and green and and other suits on and uh, they surprised me, yes, absolutely. It's an emotional time in the pit lane for Jim Briodi and the team as he gets ready for the last stint, not just of this race, but of his driving career. Yep, I'm gonna do, the, do my final stint and the team wants me to be in the car to take the checkered flag, which will be the checkered flag of my career. He, he has to do the finish and uh, we had to get to the finish. Of course, it's a pit that uh, Jim is, uh, yeah, yeah, one day you have to stop, he's 75 years old, you know, and uh, I must say his reflexes are good, his, his time is good, you know, he's very consistent, but uh, I think um, sometimes it's time to say goodbye. Oh, but hang on, are we going to finish under code 60 conditions again, just like yesterday? The MRS Porsche, David Roberts at the wheel, is smoking out on the track and just a dozen minutes to go until we see the chequered flag. Thanks to great work from the hard-working marshals, we will get a green flag finish. The number 980 Porsche returns to its pit crew. That leaves the rest of the field to charge at racing speeds towards the finishing flag. In the GT division, the Black Falcon Mercedes. It was an Audi that won in Dubai, a Ferrari at Portimao and a Lamborghini in Spain at Barcelona. That means the continent season has had four different winning brands for the GTs. The touring car division is won by Red Camel, the third different team to win in that division in the four races this year. What a fantastic end to this event. It has been battles going on yesterday, today, part one, part two, 11 hours, 13 hours, great racing. Uh, the end of the season could not have been any better. I didn't do anything in the last stint. The whole team got us to that point. I was just out there being careful. Anybody wanted by, I rolled out the red carpet and let them by. I stayed off all the curbs, just being really careful. Uh, just uh, may take, making sure the car stood together for that last hour. Uh, so it's really uh, it's a testament to the whole Black Falcon team. Oh yeah, it was awesome. I mean, the uh, team did. A wonderful do job, the strategy was just perfect. I mean, can't, can't thank them enough. All the drivers, they did an amazing job. I, I think this is uh, one of the most fun races on the calendar, and uh, I tell everybody, come on, we need more. It's a collection of German flags on the quarter podium for the GT division, with a win for the Black Falcon number four AMG GT, the number 91 Porsche from Herbeth Motorsport, who in turn have six laps of a lead over the 34 car collection, Audi in third. In the TCE division, the Red Camel Jordan dot NL 101 claims the top step of the podium. AC Motorsport with their Audi number 188 in second position. The Autorama number 112 VW takes the third step on the podium. In the classes, the A6 Pro win for the overall winners, the Black Falcon number four entry in A6 Armored car collection. Also the season win for their team and their drivers. In SPX, Leipert Motorsport number 710, Lamborghini takes the class win and the season win too with driver Harold Schlotter. Porsche Lauren entry take the season championship and their driver Frederick Ansel is the class driver champion. GT4 trophies go to the RHC Jorgensen Strom number 450. Zorg take the team season championship with Olaf, Bjorn and Simon. In TCR, the victors are Red Camel. Third place, Autorama, the 112 BMW, take the season win, as do Yannick and Jerome. And finally, Zorg Rensport, number 851, claim the Cup 1 podium. What a fabulous weekend it's been here in Austin, Texas. 24 hours of racing on the circuit of the Americas as the finale of the 2019 season. But wait, the new season is already gearing up to start. In early January, the United Arab Emirates will play host to the first race of the 2020 24 hour series with the Hankook 24 hours of Dubai. All the details on 24hseries.com. All the best for the holidays, however you celebrate. So it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Jim.